So uh, I, want to talk, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of our translational science that we're doing in, for the adult uh, glioma program uh, here at University of Pittsburgh. Uh, Dr. Pollock uh, very eloquently uh, talked about the, uh, the, the uh, pediatric uh, glioma immunotherapy trials, and, and we are trying currently to replicate that in, 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 in adults, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, uh, the, the immunotherapy uh, uh, basic science and, and translational biology that's currently ongoing. Um, so uh, clearly, we're, you know, we're here to, to honor Dr. Janetta, and, um, and I, I remember as a medical student, um, in 1999, uh, being at a conference at, at, at Yale with, with Dennis Spencer, and the patient that was uh, being presented was a uh, patient with, with trigeminal neuralgia. And uh, by the end of the presentation, the, the residents and, and, and everyone had, had eloquently described uh, this process of microvascular decompression, which to me at the time seemed truly like magic, right? So, uh, I was asked to, to look at this article that Dr. Uh, multiple people in the room here, doc, uh, well, Dr. Uh, Joe, uh, David Bissonette, um, and Dr. Janetta, you know, really uh, sort of pri pioneered uh, the work that went into this article. And the, and the remarkable thing about this, uh, this, the, uh, this publication, obviously, was a culmination of, of all of Dr. Uh, Janetta's work. But it wasn't just about the innovation um, in, in neurosurgery that made microvascular decompression work. When you, when you looked at the, 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 uh, this publication in detail, what you saw was that uh, was the, 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 the amount of uh, work and the infrastructure that went into it. They evaluated 1,185 patients over a 20-year period. Um, they had exquisite uh, documentation of clinical performance. And that is really what made uh, 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 the, the, the art of microvascular de decompression so established in neurosurgery. And so uh, this is part of what brought me to this institution and part, part of what we are trying to emulate is, is trying to, uh, to utilize the infrastructure that Dr. Janetta built um, and that uh, others at the institution have um, have really kind of utilized to, 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 uh, to, to uh, make advances in neurosurgery. So uh, what, what we've done with the adult brain tumor program is to start to, uh, to perform deep characterization of every single uh, glioma that comes through our institution um, when we have access to those samples. And so far, what we've been able to do is to, is to uh, look at 213 patient samples that, we've, that we take straight from the operating room. Uh, we uh, analyze these samples for uh, immune infiltrates. Uh, we look at the, uh, we collect the patient's blood. Um, we look at immune histochemistry. We perform uh, uh, targeted genetic analysis for multiple genes. Um, and ultimately, in, 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 in for many of these samples, we are able to use them uh, as xenografts in animals uh, to test uh, agents which ultimately can be, uh, can be uh, brought back to the, to, to, to the human, uh, to human clinical trials. Um, so one of the applications of, of, of the work that we've done um, has been uh, in, in the, in the, in the uh, field of immunotherapy, and Dr. Uh, Pollock uh, uh, sort of introduced this already, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be very brief. Um, in describing immunotherapy, immunotherapy is, a, is, is the concept uh, that, uh, we, that, the, uh, that our own immune system uh, can be harnessed to destroy cancer cells, and this is, a, this is a, uh, a therapeutic approach that's gaining a lot of traction, obviously, um, and has multiple uh, different uh, potential uh, um, uh, approaches, including cancer vaccines that Dr. Uh, Pollock described, uh, anti-tumor antibodies, uh, which are uh, currently used in a number of different uh, cancer types, um, and immune-activating small molecules. And I'll describe a, a, a one of those small molecules uh, in this talk. Um, the important thing to note is that 
when, when you look at the amount of immune cells in, in, in humans that's able to, to target a cancer cell, you, know, you really see that there, there, are vi- there are a wide variety of, uh, of effector immune cells. And, uh, and this is something that's, that, you know, when f- folks think about immunotherapy, uh, uh, the, 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 in neurosurgery, we really haven't done a good job of characterizing the immune cells that are available uh, to be used uh, in, uh, f- for I- immunotherapy uh, uh, trials and immunotherapy de- uh, development. Um, the reason this is important is, is that if you look at the, at, at the cancer types where immunotherapy has been really successful, uh, what you see is that the, the amount of immune cells, the number of immune cells that infiltrate into that cancer is perhaps the most predictive, uh, predictive uh, factor for whether or not that tumor will re- respond to, to immunotherapy. And indeed, what, you, uh, what we can see here on the right is that melanoma, uh, which is uh, by, by far the, uh, the sort of stalwart of, of, of immunotherapy, the, there are, uh, there's about a 30 to 40% percent, percent res, uh, response rate, and those response rates are durable. Um, Melanoma has among the highest number of immune infiltrates, whereas uh, in the tumors that we treat as neurosurgeons, low-grade gliomas and, and glioblastomas, they're, they're, uh, there's a relatively low number of, of, uh, of immune cells. So what does this mean? Uh, what it means is that, you know, well, first of all, we have to uh, characterize which, which immune cells are potentially beneficial and which ones are not. Um, and, the, uh, and in terms of anti-tumor immunity, there's certainly uh, two aspects of, of, of the immune system. There's a good side of the immune system where you have uh, activating uh, immune cells like NK cells and T cells that ultimately attack the tumor. Uh, there are, uh, there's a, a bad uh, or repressive uh, arm of the immune system uh, where, uh, where, uh, that's designed to keep inflammation down uh, where the tumor cells can activate uh, immune cells called Tregs, among others, uh, other types of inhibitory immune cells, and those cells can inhibit T cell function. So it, the type of immune cell that you have is critically important uh, for your tumor. NK cells uh, are uh, innate immune cells that, are, uh, that, that have effector uh, immune functions and can, and can uh, destroy tumor cells without being uh, previously, uh, 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 without previous exposure to the antigens in the, in the tumor cells. Um, and it, um, with, uh, part of the uh, analysis that we've done with our, our, our human tissue is that we have uh, looked at uh, a, a number of, uh, of gliomas to, to determine uh, what the extent of uh, NK cell, cell infiltration is. And what we see remarkably is that uh, gliomas that uh, express IDH mutations have incredibly low numbers of immune cells, but even more importantly, these NK cells that are really uh, uh, predictors of, uh, of uh, anti-tumor immunity are here at the very bottom. There's almost no expression of, of, of these uh, NK cells in, in, uh, in IDH mutant gliomas. So what this uh, should mean, in effect, is that, uh, is that IDH mutant gliomas uh, may not be good targets for immunotherapy as we currently, um, uh, as we currently, uh, 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 th- th- for current immunotherapy trials. And it, the only way to really potentially get uh, immunotherapy to work in these tumors may be to try to elevate uh, the expression of these, of these NK cells. Now, this is important because uh, when we've gone back and looked at, uh, at flow cytometry samples, so taking uh, huge chunks of tumor, uh, performing a deep a- analysis of the, of the types of immune cells within the tumor, the only predictive uh, immune cell uh, in, uh, for, for overall survival uh, has been uh, NK cells. And this is an important departure from the way that, that, that immune phenotyping and immune cell characterization has been done in the past for gliomas where uh, we've only used immunohistochemistry and in this, in this uh, case we're able to get uh, enough uh, samples and uh, large enough samples 
and have good enough technology to be able to do flow cytometry and to look at uh, individual immune cells. In fact, NK cells are, uh, to, to this point, uh, the only predictive uh, 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 immune cell type for overall survival. So part of what my research group has done is to determine whether there are factors that can promote uh, NK cell infiltration, that can promote uh, uh, um, anti-tumor activity by NK cells. And the, 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 there's a sort of a, always a circuitous path to, to all of these stories, but this path led us to a gene called RBP1. Now, what we found was that this gene RBP1 uh, is, is uh, significantly uh, uh, suppressed in both uh, 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 human and uh, animal IDH mutant cancers, and there are only seven genes that were that were uh, downregulated in all in, in both uh, adult and I'm sorry in, in both human and animal uh, glioblastomas, and RBP1 was one of them. Um, and uh, uh, and we know we've we know that uh, RBP1, which uh, ultimately uh, is a chaperone protein that. Uh, leads to retinoic acid production um, is important because retinoic acid is actually uh, one of the critical factors for uh, both for promoting uh, NK cell uh, infiltration and also uh, NK cell function uh, in, 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 uh, in, in humans in general. So uh, we, we went back and we, and we uh, looked at animal studies where we thought, well, does, do, does this retinoic acid uh, pathway suppression in, in IDH mutant uh, tumors matter at all? And in fact, what we've seen is that it, it does matter. Um, and when we treat uh, mutant, IDH mutant uh, uh, tumors with retinoic acid, uh, if you look over here, the NK cells are markedly uh, uh, upregulated. Um, and this is, this, is, this is the ideal setting that you, that you would want for, for anti-tumor uh, immunity. And so, you know, the, the, this is entirely facetious, but you know, uh, retinoic acid or Accutane is best known for, uh, for treatment of, 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 uh, of acne and not gliomas. But is it possible that, that, uh, that retinoic acid can be used as a targeted uh, therapy for, for, uh, for improving immunotherapeutic uh, outcomes uh, in gliomas? This is a question that we're very interested in answering. Um, our, our, anim our data in animals is uh, remarkable um, in that we see uh, a, a very significant uh, impact on retinoic acid, uh, uh, on, on uh, uh, human uh, xenograft uh, glioma growth uh, that are in uh, situations where patients are treated by retinoic, uh, with retinoic acid. Um, this is only seen in IDH mutant tumors, and this phenomenon is totally dependent on NK, on NK cells. So uh, the way this ultimately works, we think, is that uh, retinoic acid, when uh, exposed to, to, to IDH mutant tumors, uh, results in infiltration of, of NK cells, which leads to the regression of these tumors. If you take any other kind of, uh, of, of glioma, or if you take uh, the IDH mutant gliomas and you block NK cells, you lose this effect. So this is a, a specific uh, uh, genotype-dependent uh, uh, effect that is dependent on, uh, that is also dependent on, uh, on uh, immune cells. Um, we, because of the fact that retinoic acid is, has been used, in fact, for treatment, treatment of, of, of gliomas and other, other cancers, but in, in, a, in, in a manner in which uh, no one really knew that there was, that there was a potential specific target, uh, a specific genotype that it would work for, um, we, we've been able to start applying this in, 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 in some patients with no uh, options. Uh, this is a patient who uh, wh had a grade 2 glioma that eventually uh, transformed into a, a higher grade uh, tumor here. Um, and this patient was on temozolomide, but ultimately uh, had a significant myelosuppression and was no longer uh, able to stay on, on temozolomide, and her tumor progressed. Um, 
we, we uh, started this patient on, on uh, all transretinoic acid based on some of the work in the lab, and three months later, the, the, we've had durable, uh, we, we, we started to have a durable response, and the patient is still uh, alive uh, roughly a year after, after starting treatment. Um, so based on these, uh, these uh, early promising uh, uh, data, We've, uh, we've started to, uh, to, to put together a clinical trial um, very similar to the, to, to the, the trials that uh, Dr. Pollock described um, where, we will, uh, uh, where we'll use retinoic acid in a neoadjuvant fashion um, uh, to, uh, to determine uh, its impact on recurrent uh, IDH mutant tumors. Our primary objective is going to be uh, progression-free survival and uh, objective response rates. Um, and secondary objective will be uh, overall survival, and we're uh, currently uh, uh, nearing submission to, to, the, to, uh, to the IRB uh, for, this, uh, for this protocol. So um, in summary, uh, you know, the, the, the world of immunotherapy is, is, is uh, rapidly changing, um, and uh, we've not had great successes in gliomas, but, with, but as we begin to document tumors and as we begin to characterize tumors using the infrastructure that, that folks like Dr. Janetta built, um, we can potentially uh, start to apply uh, some, of these, uh, some of these findings uh, to benefit uh, our patients. So thank you very much for having me.